Hey, let's talk about kindergarten math. In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside Matthew C. Primer as well as Simply Math K from The Good and the Beautiful and showing you a comparison and contrast of these two kindergarten math programs. All right, so these are the two curriculums that I'm going to be comparing. I will just start off by pointing out that the good and the beautiful option, Simply Math, is less expensive. All that you need for this curriculum is the student book, which you can purchase uh, in a hard copy, or you can purchase a PDF. And I believe they will soon be making it free, actually, as a PDF. But it is already quite inexpensive in PDF format. And they also include, they also have a math box that you can purchase with physical manipulatives. From my experience of this curriculum so far, you don't necessarily need the math box. So if you are homeschooling abroad and it's too difficult to get the math box, um, I've, I've found ways to make it work and I will talk about that later. Primer, you will need the teacher's manual. Um, I, if you aren't used to Matthew C's teaching style, I do definitely recommend the instructor's manual. Once you kind of know their system, you're not necessarily going to use the instructor's manual all that much, although I think they always have a nice, good, short reading for at the beginning of each weekly lesson so that you can learn about the concepts and the way that they're, why they teach the way they do and how to do it. So I do like the instructor's manual, but um, like it's not something that you're gonna be pulling out every single lesson. I do think it's important if you're new to Matthew C, although if you use it for years, you will find yourself not using it so much. Then it has the student workbook, which is quite thick here. It has 30 lessons meant to take approximately a week, um, but of course you're gonna go at your pace. Uh, 30 lessons, and then you have the A, B, C, D, E, F, G pages for each lesson um, within that workbook. Then you have the Matthew C, very famous Matthew C manipulatives. This is not the whole complete set. Um, my mom has all the Matthew C stuff. So what I did was I just stole enough pieces from her Matthew C um, manipulative set, enough to cover all of my basics for right now, what I need for now. <laughs> Um, but they look like that in case you don't know what they look like. Now, let's um, talk about Matthew C first. If you are not subscribed yet, this is your reminder to subscribe. I mean, be honest with yourself. Are you really going to only watch one homeschool video? This is a curriculum that's been around for a very, very long time. I'm saying that primer is kindergarten level in this video, although in reality, it is a very gentle kindergarten. So this might be a more appropriate kindergarten if you're looking for a kindergarten program for a younger age kindergartner or maybe pre-k kind of age level, but a kid who's interested and ready to start with a math workbook and a math curriculum. Primer focuses on it, it is the introduction to math. It is the introduction to numbers. What are numbers? There's a lot of work on number sense. So you can see how it starts off with. So if you did a 1C page in a day, you are just doing three problems on that day. Three times of counting these blocks, you can be using the one, one blocks to build, on, build it with. Counting them and circling the correct number is where you start off with in that very first week of math you see. And then it progresses from there. But there's a lot of focus on counting throughout this. We start learning how to write numbers. We start filling in these 10 frames with how many, how many blocks to fill in one number. So you gradually, slowly, systematically progress. One thing I like right here when we're counting um, eights and nines, we're counting these different amounts of items. We're using pictures of real items, but they're very neatly kind of mathematically arranged. We can see right here that nine is three threes. Um, we can see that eight is two sets of four, just in their very simple, clear arrangements of those numbers. 
And I think that is a really great factor. So we're getting through these. You might be, this would be maybe about a month in, then this is where you'll be. My son loves these work pages and tends to fly through them. Um, wanting to do uh, four pages front and back in a day. And that's actually one of the reasons I added in a second to math curriculum was because I didn't want him to fly through this too fast because I think the concepts are very, very solid and I, I don't want him to rush so much as he wants to rush. So throwing some extra math worksheets at him is a good option when you have a younger child who is really enjoying a subject but isn't maybe too ready to move on. Now later on in the book, we get into some other foundational concepts. We have our tally marks. We have tens and hundreds. We have some counting, counting by fives, different types of skip counting. Later on, I'm trying to show you a good look inside here so that you can know what to expect towards the end. Uh, we're adding hundreds, counting by tens, adding tens. Um, everything is very visual. You are constantly including these within the lessons. It's very systematic and very much mastery based. So something to note is that they're not including a lot of the math related um, subjects. Like we don't have a lot about days of the week or months of the year or weather. I feel like that often gets added into math programs. Um, there isn't a whole lot of extra. There is some time um, related work in here, but it's very much focused. So this can be a really good option if your child is kind of struggling with math, could be one option. It can also be a good option for kids who like math and just want to do a lot with numbers. Kids who like numbers and want to do a lot with them, this can be a really good option. It's very strong on the concepts. It's very simple and undistracting in the pages, but these colorful manipulatives are so fun. Um, the boys do like to play with them quite a bit, even not in school time, so I have to make sure that they do not get lost because they're very special. <laughs> um, so that's what you can expect in some of the strengths of primer. It, it doesn't have kind of the extras or a lot of connections outside of math in it, although it does have, you know, real life objects. We're not getting a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of story in here, which is really nice for kids who just want to do the math. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about um, Simply Math from The Good and the Beautiful and tell you some things that I've noticed and some things that you can expect from this program. Now, probably the first thing I'm going to say is that if you're coming from math, you see, or more back to the basics, very structured, simple, mastery-based math program, the first thing that you're gonna feel is that this seems a little bit chaotic, <laughs> a little bit messy in some sense, but I do think that there, there are some good elements here. And I will say just at the beginning that my son also really enjoys this and he doesn't necessarily wanna do so many lessons in this one because the lessons are longer and include more. But there are definitely days when he's like, hey, I, I didn't get to write enough numbers. So he wants to do the next lesson because he sees that it includes writing numbers or some a fun map that he wants to do. So I'll show you. I do really like this, this review section that they start off with every day. So in this example, they have you practice counting to 15, identifying the shapes and identifying these numbers. See, for me as a homeschooler, I don't like reviewing. <laughs> and that just happens to be kind of the way I learn. I recently did a video with my mom on gifted homeschool, so you can watch that if you want some explanation on that. But I am not naturally someone who wants to review material already taught. Uh, but normal kids need a good amount of review, and it's review is a good thing. And my son actually doesn't also super like to review, but he hasn't mastered some of these things yet. He hasn't mastered counting to higher numbers. A couple shapes he can be a little bit iffy on sometimes because we are trying to learn them in both English and in Spanish. So we practice their names in English and in Spanish. So I, I do really like the reviews because it's not something I would naturally do. Um, but I think it's good for me and it's good for my son. And so when I say, oh, it says we have to count till 15 or 20 or 30, then he will do it um, because it's on the list and he likes to do what's on the list. So that's one feature that I do really like. You can kind of see 
From the very beginning, they have n practice with tracing numbers. There's a lot of counting activities. Um, my son likes to cross out wrong answers, so if you see a lot of X's, that's why. By lesson four, we're already um, changing from seeing numbers as only for counting as to numbers for order of events. So this is kind of going in, this is prep for what's going to be ordinal numbers. They do introduce ordinal numbers very early. Um, so with a younger child doing kindergarten level work, to me that's a little bit more of an abstract concept, a one that's a little bit more challenging. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. I'm not worried right now if my son totally masters ordinal numbers, um, but it's something that's coming up again and again within this program. Then in the next lesson, we are going into position words. Again, a great, a great thing, a great, great thing to learn about the positions. These are also, you know, prepositions, position words, under, behind, front, above, and finding these. But you can kind of see how it's going to a lot of different things in a relatively short time span. Then there's a lot of map activities because part of what's in the math box is little toy cars. Now my son loves maps and he loves cars. We don't have the math box, but we have a lot of tiny toy cars. So every time there's a map activity, he loves it. He tells me he wants to save it. He wants to keep it in his room and he wants to play with it. So that's just something to be aware if you have map loving kids. When they have counting activities in this, instead of the kind of grids that you saw in math you see, they typically have a real life picture where you're trying to count, say the birds there, there's four birds there, but they're not in a grid, they're kind of naturally in this different kind of pattern. I think that this approach has its own benefits as opposed to the grid approach I also think it's more challenging. You can tell that we're counting much smaller objects and counting natural objects can be a little bit more difficult. Um, my son loves to put check marks on his correct, on like whatever is the correct answer and then X out whatever is the wrong one. So you'll see um, math with a real child, the pages are gonna look messy. They're not gonna look like they're filled out by an adult, <laughs> as we all know. Uh, he really liked that one, figuring out how to put three carrots in each box for the rabbit. Here's an example of an activity that they do with objects from the math box. Spatial reasoning activity. I don't skip these because I don't have the math box, but I have just normal blocks without numbers on them and I use our blue 10 sticks that just happen to be the same color. And I say, okay, we're just gonna use this as a stick right now. And we make these little shapes just using what we have on hand. So that's an option. Um, some, I would say that sometimes their paintings are very cute. I would say that sometimes they are a little bit detailed. This was an example of one that was pretty tough, I would say, for a very young child to notice the differences because it, it definitely was not obvious which shirt is exactly the same. You have to look very closely at the little bands around the arm or the collar around his neck. Their objects for counting and their paintings can be kind of small and have fairly small details. Um, so that's something to be aware of, that it's not just as like plain, clear, very easy to see. The details are very beautiful. Um, and maybe it's just my older eyes. <laughs> Sometimes it seems very small what we're supposed to be looking at. You can see here, this is where ordinal numbers are introduced. We have another little map scene looking page over here where we're finding how many of each object. And so you can tell like we're counting chicks. Those are pretty small little chicks right there. Uh, but my son has done fine. He sometimes wants to do the pages in his own unique way, kind of um, adjusting <laughs> the activity. Uh, as he wants to do it. <laughs> this one, see this page didn't have any number writing on it, so he, he, we, I just, I know that he loves writing numbers, so then we just wrote the numbers next to each of these 10 sticks that we're using. 
So I'm showing you as an example. You can tell, I think, you know, this is just the first couple weeks. We're introducing a lot more and a wider variety of concepts than math you see for sure. So this is probably not gonna be the best curriculum for a younger age student. If you have an older kindergartner who's very ready for all of this, then I think it would be easy for them to master these concepts than compared to if you're using this with a younger, um, younger student like I am, who's not really kindergarten age, but is very interested in math and wanting to do a lot of math. See, we have count counting up till 40. We're counting birds on branches. There's some very small little birds that you're counting. And this was another map that he really, really liked on the safari. So you can see it's, it's a wider variety and, and you definitely go back and practice different concepts. So the same concepts are coming up again and again, um, but it, it's not necessarily handling each concept super thoroughly when it's first introduced. The lessons are longer than individual math you see less lessons as in what you would do in a day since these lessons are meant to be done in a day and math you see lessons can take a week or more oh my son will love that map and he'll probably love that race thing as well so i think if you have a kid who loves math you're not going to go wrong with pretty much any kindergarten math program um uh, this one will be a lot of counting counting to 60 pretty high number uh, but there's just some things to be aware of in here. Like I mentioned, the fact that you're usually counting in a more natural setting is, it's, has its own benefits, but it can be more challenging. The fact that we're introducing a lot of concepts in a short time span might mean that you might not be seeing your child completely master some of the concepts that, depending on their level of readiness. So concepts like ordinal numbers or tally marks might, might take a little bit. It might take going back to it, going back to it, to um, until a point where they've got it. Um, but this is what you can expect from Simply Good and the Beautiful Math. I didn't really find the way that they taught addition to be the most solid conceptual introduction to addition that I have ever seen before. I felt it was a, it was a little bit like, really? Just that? That, that that's how we're that's how we're introducing addition. I I felt like that was a little bit not so solid, but also my son already knew how to add. So, you know, it it depends on what your child knows and doesn't know and what you need from a math curriculum that will make it good for you. My, what my son really likes about this is there's a lot more number writing. There has not yet been much number writing in Matthew C. And there's a lot of what he calls maps, which are usually pictures that do tend to look like kind of maps. There's roads or paths or scenes on them. He loves that quite a bit. And of course, all the addition. The, he loves addition. So <laughs> that is um, what you can expect.